Welcome back to another episode of Junkie with Junior, folks. We got an airboat to work on tonight. My buddy Kevin brought it to me. He had some metal work redone on the boat, updating the design a little bit in the metal works, and it ran for a little while. Now it doesn't run. So he did diagnose it a little bit before he brought it to me. The little sight glasses on the side of the bowls on the carburetors don't have it. You can't see any gas in the bowls of the carburetor. So that tells us that our fuel pump's not working in some way, shape, or form. So we don't know if it's a loose ground, no ground, power situation, uh, switch, who knows? Um, could be a few things, you know, whenever you start doing some metal work, could have just, you know, missed something really obvious, no telling. So we're gonna get this thing backed into the shop, get our power probe out and see if we can start diagnosing this boat and figuring out where the real problem lies. Get our main power switched on, hit our ignition key. And that humming noise is the water pump running but we have no fuel pump. You normally hear that thing buzzing. She's right down here, conveniently located between the gas tank and the batteries. So not gonna be fun to get to. Both batteries will probably be just gotten out of the way to get to that to make life a little easier. But let's diagnose it a little bit more. So we know it's not running. So let's hook up our trusty old power probe and see what we've got going as far as power to the pump or lack of power or ground or lack of ground. And that's one thing that I love about a power probe is it's not like a regular test light. A regular test light hooks to a ground source and whenever you touch the tip of a standard test light to a hot wire or 12 volt wire, it lights up a bulb in the handle. Nice thing about a power probe is it hooks up directly to the battery and you've got some long leads on it so you got plenty of working room. And once that's hooked directly to the battery, now we have a switch on here that's our positive red light in green negative light. So it acts just like a regular test light, but we can flip the switch this towards up towards the positive and that will send 12 volts to the tip to whatever wiring uh, that we're checking or we could send a ground to it if we think it's a ground issue. So let's get her hooked up. So now that our power probe's hooked up to a 12 volt battery source, I can show you here, we can flip the switch up and that sends 12 volts, 12 volts to the probe. We push it down and that sends ground. If we just jab it into a wire, it's gonna tell us if it's got power or a ground. For example, ground, green light. So let's get down here with this fuel pump and get a black wire going to the other side. It's a tight situation getting down in here. Let's see if we can reach it. I'm just gonna try to poke this wire here because I can't get to the terminal on the very bottom like I wish I could. Okay, so that's stabbed into the wire. It's going red, or excuse me, green, because it's a ground. And if we send 12 volts to it, the pump runs. The pump seems to be working pretty good not making any odd noise or anything it's definitely priming up because the system is dry so we know we have no power going to the pump so like I say this metal work got redone on the boat the seat stand here so now it's time to trace that what I think was a red wire that's faded to white because there's another you can see where it turns red coming back this way we're gonna trace that back up and get into this box somehow so that we can get into this switch panel and see if it's something that's just disconnected. Uh, it could be hooked up to a toggle switch, even though none of these have a fuel pump signal. We could hook it up to one of these, or we could put it on the key switch. Uh, not sure. So this appears to power the entire system for these switches, but no fuel pump. So we're still gonna have to do that. Okay, let's dive into it a little bit further. We got this access panel down here. I'm gonna grab an Allen wrench so we can take that off and see what we're in for inside. Oh man, now this is another thing that's a pet peeve of mine, a stainless screw without anti-seize on it. I can promise you there will be some on it when it goes back together. I love a stainless bolt, but they can gall so easy, it is not worth taking the risk. Put a little bit of anti-seize on there and you never have to worry about them. Because if that thing were to stick, it makes for a really bad day. 
It is not fun trying to get out a galded or broken stainless steel bolt. Got better things to do with my time than mess around with that. Oh yeah, one of my favorites. Let's just twist it together with some wire nuts and put some tape on it and it'll be fine, right? Hmm, maybe. Okay. Red flag number one. Literally a red wire that's not plugged in. Let's grab our probe here. So we got nothing going to it. I always like to send the ground first just to hit it real quick to see if it does anything. And then we can hit it with a positive and see if it does anything. Nothing. So we could say that that's a dead wire. Turn our key on just to double check. And usually if it's hooked to something that's not running, you'll get a, you know, ground signal, but we don't even have that. So I just say that's an extra dead wire in there. So we get to keep digging for that mysterious fuel pump wire. <clears throat> It's one of the hard parts is always trying to go back, you know, after someone else has already worked on stuff to uh, figure it out because you just don't know. And stuff gets kind of wadded up in here. Here's a fuse block. I'd say that's important. Glad to see. It would be nicer if it was mounted somewhere so that you could actually access it in the event that you needed to. <clears throat> Nothing's labeled. And all the fuses are good so we can verify we've got ground there nothing there check each side of these fuses nothing 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 okay <clears throat> so that's with the center toggle switch on we shut it off we still have the same thing so I think it's safe to say that none of these are for the fuel pump circuit. <clears throat> so let's keep digging. Man, oh man. It'd be way too easy if this was it. <laughs> and I don't see any other loose wires in this box so i think our next step is going to be following that wire from the pump all the way back up here and see if we can find where it pokes out houston we have found some problems so i climbed up under the boat here and we've got actually do you have a relay that's impressive uh, junction slash distribution block here another relay over here some of the stuff could be for stereo stuff though he does have a decent amount of that in the boat but we do have a red wire over here that is hot uh, with the key on right now and we have this other one over here sorry for the uh, bumping of the camera there it's tight quarters and this is another wire that doesn't have anything coming to it right now okay so we could say that's a main power but before we go too far and make some assumptions let's get back up here turn our ignition key on water pumps running turn our accessory switch on so we should have a fuel pump running with the stuff in that position let's see if that changes the status of this wire negative we do not have any power or ground on that wire so this actually could be that same wire that's sticking up in the box up top all by itself and this black wire is nothing it is an extra wire this one is still 12 volts good grief there's a lot of red wires okay but we know our fuel pump wire comes up in this harness some where look at this one not even plugged into anything could this be our mysterious fuel pump wire that we're looking for try and hold it here 
Okay, it's showing ground. Let's send 12 volts to it and see what it does. There's our fuel pump wire. Okay, so we found our fuel pump wire. Now we just have to figure out where it was or where it's supposed to go. I would really like if it goes to this relay up here without the nothing on that one terminal. So let's check that and see that is hot 12 volts on that side of the relay. Okay, so I'm going to shut off our accessory switch first to see if that's how they have it wired up. We can check this wire again and we'll find out, excuse me, the terminal. Okay, so we still have 12 volts on that side of the relay. Okay, next step, shut our ignition switch off because the pump should be running off of the ignition switch. And what do we have? Nothing. So that is our fuel pump relay. If it's not, it's gonna be. I promise. Man, just gotta be a contortionist to work on these things. So we're gonna plug that on there, which appears where it could have been missing from. I'm not sure. Wiring definitely needs some tidying up on this boat. So now we're gonna turn our key on. Fuel pump's running. It has fuel pressure. And the bowls have fuel in them. Again, this front float level's a little bit high. You may need to investigate that some after it's running. Shut this noisy thing off. All right, so we found our relay switch 12 volt source for the fuel pump wire. Got our fuel pump wire hooked back up. Next step, we're gonna put this cover back on. Definitely apply some anti-seize on these screws. Tuck this stuff back away in here, just like I found it because we're not doing a complete rewire job. Wiring is actually one of my least favorite things to do. Um, yeah, I can figure some of it out. I do understand a decent amount of it, but I just don't like it. It's not my thing like it is for some people. So we'll get this cover back on. Still got some daylight. Let's pull this thing out in the yard and fire it up and make sure everything's good to go. Trust the old antices. I'm telling you, this is a lifesaver. For whoever has to pull these screws out in the future, you are welcome because this will make your life 10 to 20 times easier, I promise. And it only takes a few extra seconds to do this and you never have to worry about it. It is the cheapest insurance you can do. Antices on a stainless bolt always 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 then you never have to worry about it done all right let's climb up here and see if this big dog will run Master power switch is already on, ignition switch. Got a nice squeaky bell though. pressure the manual gauge says back here coming in about nine pounds as well so that's a little stout 
run level's a little bit high, so we'll drop our fuel pressure down some, help it out. All right, so a couple things. Back the screw out of the fuel pressure regulator and the fuel pressure did not drop any. Revved up the engine so it could consume more fuel to make sure that the pressure label, pressure level had an area to drop by consuming some and it still didn't drop any. So that diaphragm must be just too stiff and worn out in there, you know, from the fuel tightening up that diaphragm. So we're gonna have to get a new diaphragm for it, but it runs okay. I'd rather see it a little lower on the pressure because there's no room for error where it's at as far as an increase in pressure, but it runs good. So we're not gonna touch anything else tonight. The alternator belt squeak is driving me absolutely nuts. I was looking at it, the alternator, it's actually a little bit crooked. The belt tension is trying to pull the alternator forward towards the front of the engine in the boat. So that serpentine belt is misaligned and it squeaks like a mug. If you had a V-belt, you could probably get away with a little bit of that and it wouldn't squeak so much, but that serpentine just doesn't want to have any part of it. Well, that's going to do it for this one, a quick and easy repair. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with some friends. They may enjoy it as well. Might even learn something along the way. Thanks again for watching Junkwood Jr. and we will see you next time.